everyone, I'm Taylor and welcome back to Debatable, the show where the most opinionated debaters face off to take off the internet's favorite hot topics. Our panel of expert judges will weigh in on each argument and finally declare a winner, putting an end to years of discourse. Let's meet today's debaters. First up, we have Shondor LaRange. He's a Fordham student, the vice president of the Fordham debate team, and he's also an ordained minister. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Father. We also have Jess Reed. She's a former collegiate debater and also has a tattoo of Yosemite Sam. But enough about them. Let's get down to the serious issues. Today's resolve is, it's okay to be barefoot on an airplane. On the affirmative, we have Jess. And Jess, you have 60 seconds on the clock, starting now. There is no FAA regulation saying that you cannot be barefoot on a plane. So unfortunately, even if some people do find it unsavory, it is perfectly okay for you to take off your shoes and socks on a plane. Furthermore, I think it is a touch xenophobic to think that taking your shoes and socks off on a plane is disgusting. There are many cultures that find this acceptable. Scandinavian culture, Ethiopian, Russian, and Japan. Furthermore, the Mayo Clinic has said that being on a plane due to the seat position and the pressure does make your feet swell, so it can be painful to keep on your shoes and socks. Frankly, it is uncomfortable to be on a plane, and so the sacrifice of having to keep your shoes on for a societal norm that might not even be okay, I think, is not worth it, and you should definitely be able to take your shoes and socks off on a plane. Okay, now we've got Shondor on the negative. Shondor, you've got 60 seconds starting now. Okay, three independent reasons why it's not okay to be barefoot on a plane. One, this is unsanitary. Think of how short the time is from a plane arriving until it's flying off again. They can't possibly be cleaning it all that thoroughly. Therefore, you have no idea how many or what germs you're exposing your foot to. Conversely, you really have no idea what germs might be on your own feet that you're exposing the other people on the plane to, who might come from other areas or countries and therefore have different natural immunities. Second, there needs to be order on planes. Planes are small, stressful places. It is imperative to take every effort in order to reduce the amount of unnecessary disturbances in order to preserve calmness. People associate order with safety. Allowing barefootedness lowers the standard of what is acceptable on a plane, therefore decreasing probability and increasing panic. Third, this is not healthy. Prolonged periods of inactivity, exactly like a flight, can accelerate the formation of blood clots. Some people even wear compression socks on planes in order to avoid this. It is in your own best interest to always have at least something assisting your circulation. Also, being barefoot is generally somewhat hazardous, so if you do manage to get up, you might fall, hurting and embarrassing yourself. All right, next up, we've got a 30 second rebuttal from Jess. Are you ready? I am. All right, 30 seconds on the clock, starting now. The negative did not refute that there are no regulations from the FFA saying that you can take off your shoes and socks on a plane. He also did not address the problem of inherent xenophobia in the resolve. Furthermore, saying that uh, you could get blood clots from flying, I think is completely speculative. Furthermore, he said that order and safety is at risk if you take your shoes off on a plane. I think that that is hyperbolic at best. An amazing job from Jess and another SAT word, hyperbolic. What you know about it? Okay, Shondor, you've got 30 seconds for your rebuttal. Are you ready? Yes. 30 seconds on the clock, starting now. Spare responses. On the point about FAA regulation, legality does not dictate morality or acceptability. Look at the example of the speed limit, something which is illegal but people find perfectly acceptable to do. On the point of culture and xenophobia, name a culture that never wears socks or shoes. American culture has a lot of places where we don't wear socks and shoes, but the norm is still in a common place that you do. Finally, on the point of feet swelling, the blood clot source is any hospital, and taking off socks while it might help to reduce swelling is not going to help you with the actual bigger problem, which is blood clots in your legs. Damn, boy. Okay, now let's hear from our judges. First up, we've got Alex Robinson. Hey, what's up, I'm Alex. I'm a writer and editor for Thrillist.com, and I will always wear shoes on a plane. So a couple things I wanted to note here. Shondor was kind of pandering to a fear-mongering kind of crowd. He brings up germs, uh, he brings up the fact that you could slip and fall, and the fact that panic could ensue from not wearing shoes on an airplane. A little bit hyperbolic, so I gotta give this one to Jess. Okay, that's one vote for Jess and one vote for hyperbole. Up next, we've got Onika Raymond. Hey y'all, I'm Onika, a travel writer, host, and correspondent, and uh, I may or may not have a foot fetish. Just kidding. <laughs> or is she? Okay, Onika, what do we think about this debate? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, Shondor, you presented really well. However, you were lacking in facts and statistics, and I feel as though Jess definitely roped in the FAA regulations. She talked about the Mayo Clinic, and so I really feel as though she had a lot of evidence and her arguments were well supportive, and therefore I would say that she won this debate. Okay, let's hear from our last judge, John Lopresto. Hey guys, I'm John. I'm an event producer at Thrillist and I travel a lot for work. Personally, 
always keeping my shoes on on the plane because I don't like germs. But actually for this one, I'm actually gonna have to give it to Shandor. You know, you raised a lot of great points, specifically refuting the points that Jess made. For example, you talk about FAA regulations, but this is a public space. And while there might be regulations at home for you in your private space, a plane is a public space as you perfectly alluded to. There are societal norms here that we have to recognize uh, across cultures. And in a public space, I think that's where, you know, for me, you, you win this one, Shandor. Okay, so that's two votes for Jess and one vote for Shandor, which means, Jess, you're the winner of this debate. Congratulations. Thank you. And also means once and for all that yes, it is okay for you to be barefoot on an airplane. However, do not sit next to me. I will make your trip very unpleasant. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Debatable. Thanks so much for watching Debatable and don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for what we should debate next time, leave it in the comments.